Mercedes has a roster that's chock full of star players already, ranging from the sporty AMG SL Roadster to the futuristic EQ lineup of electric vehicles. But as its best-selling vehicle in America for several years now, the GLC is actually Mercedes-Benz's utility player. So with a new redesign here for 2023, the GLC has a very challenging task ahead of it. It needs to move the ball forward so as to draft new customers into the Mercedes-Benz showroom, but not be so different that it alienates current owners. How does the 2023 GLC do? Is it the new class champ? That's what I'm here to find out. For more on the GLC, be sure to click the link in the description to read our full MotorOne.com review. And as always, you can find us on social media using the handle at MotorOne.com. That's Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. And please be sure to subscribe to the Motor One YouTube channel so that we can keep on bringing you video reviews like this one. Now, unlike the previous GLC, which was a huge departure from the boxy GLK that came before it, this new model doesn't break a ton of new ground for the nameplate. The greenhouse pinches just a little bit more as it goes toward the rear, and this new front fascia looks a little bit wider thanks to this big new grille design and these narrow triangular headlights. Moving back from the front fascia, you get some vestigial power bulges, but they're nowhere near as pronounced as they are in this car's sedan equivalent, the C-Class. One feature that I absolutely love is that if you go for the AMG line model, you get these little Mercedes-Benz stars scattered throughout. It's a really subtle touch that I think works very well on this application. Helping it just that little bit is a longer wheelbase and a wider front and rear track that gives it a much more planted stance and a more premium appearance. Otherwise, this is a pretty conservative redesign, but that's not necessarily a bad thing because the previous GLC was a very handsome and cleanly styled vehicle, and this one carries on that tradition just fine. Inside, however, the 2023 GLC is a huge improvement compared to the previous model. Now, there wasn't necessarily anything wrong with the old one, but it just looked a little bit dated, which makes sense because the car debuted six years Ago. The new one, however, leaves that design firmly in the rearview mirror, replacing the old monolithic twin screen setup with a 12.3 inch digital instrument cluster and a standalone 11.9 inch center display that's angled onto the dash and also toward the driver just a little bit to give me better access to the features and functions inside. The rest of the cabin is a huge departure from the previous GLC as well. For starters, this wood grain trim just flows beautifully into the center console, and there's some really funky rounded square vents proudly on top of the dash. Adding to the modernist appeal is this new seat design, which I actually think is borrowed from the EQ lineup of vehicles. Whether or not the futuristic new design appeals to you is a personal decision, but as for me, I think it looks fantastic with just one or two exceptions. For one, the center console feels really cheap and I just don't really love the way that Mercedes is doing lots of glossy plastic right where your hand sits all the time when you're driving. I wish that this were genuine piano black wood trim or woven aluminum. I would have nothing to complain about in that case. And then the other issue I have is this door pull. It looks futuristic, but the materials just aren't very nice. The infotainment is a big update for the GLC specifically. It's simple to use and touch response is very good. And overall, I think it's just a great system. What's more, it'll stay current because MBU now offers over-the-air updates. Out on the road, the new GLC drives a lot like the old one, which shouldn't come as too much of a surprise since both of them have a two-liter turbocharged four-cylinder engine and a nine-speed automatic transmission. However, for 2024, the GLC 300 gets 48-volt mild hybrid technology, giving that turbocharged engine a total of 255 horsepower and 295 pound-feet of torque. In addition to that peak output, you also have an integrated starter generator that's capable of applying 23 horsepower and and 148 pound-feet of torque to the output shaft in certain situations. Now, while it doesn't change the engine's maximum power and torque ratings, it does give you smoother engine restart. For example, the starter generator will get the vehicle rolling when the light turns green, giving the engine a split second of extra time to start up. It also enables the car to turn off the engine in low load situations, like when you're coasting down a freeway or descending a hill. That gives you just a little bit of extra fuel economy without sacrificing power. One of the benefits of the longer wheelbase and wider track Track is greater straight line stability. Now, the old GLC wasn't really lacking in this regard. It kind of just felt like an inexpensive Mercedes Benz. The new GLC, however, doesn't feel like an inexpensive Mercedes Benz. It just feels like a Mercedes Benz. Part of that also comes down to the added aerodynamic efficiency of the GLC, which scores a 0.29 coefficient of drag thanks to relocated side view mirrors and a few little aerodynamic tweaks under the vehicle to help it cut smoothly through the air. And again, Mercedes has advanced the GLC further with enhanced 
acoustic dampening material and thicker door seals to reduce wind noise inside when you're driving down the road at speed. Now, as you'd expect, 4Matic all-wheel drive is available on the GLC, but my car is actually a standard rear-wheel drive model. Now, the benefit to that, if you don't need the inclement weather traction, is better steering feel through the road because there isn't as much mechanical complexity up there. However, no one is buying a standard non-AMG GLC because they want incredible steering feel, and you probably won't be disappointed by the fact that this isn't a particularly athletic crossover either. The GLC does perfectly fine when you're hustling. The suspension is firm and nicely damped, so you're not bobbing and weaving with all these nauseating secondary body motions, but it's also not particularly thrilling either. I will say, however, that when it's in sport mode, the throttle is really sharp and quick to respond, giving you that full 255 horsepower and 290 95 pound feet of torque without any hint of turbo lag, made all the better by the added torque that you get from the little electric integrated starter generator. It just feels very responsive, and when you're kind of executing a quick pass, you get a lot of power very quickly, and it feels a lot more athletic than you might expect. Now, if there is a drawback to that engine, it's that it doesn't sound particularly refined when you're really hustling it hard. There's kind of a coarse grittiness that doesn't sound very Mercedes-Benz-like, and I wish there was a little more sound deadening between me and the engine to dampen some of that noise. The GLC does include a sound synthesizer that adds kind of a raspy growl when you're pushing the car hard, but if you're just tootling around town, it doesn't sound particularly refined, which is definitely a bummer. Speaking of, when it is time to slow down, there's not a whole lot to complain about with the GLC. You don't really notice the engine noise too much, and the rest of the car just feels very smooth and composed and quiet. The ride is fantastic. It's maybe a touch on the firm side if you were going over really, really brittle pavement, but otherwise, it's great. It just does such a good job of absorbing bumps with that kind of Autobahn-ready thunk that we love about German cars. The quiet ride's a given since it has all that extra sound deadening that I talked about earlier, and you can really take advantage of it if you're in a car with the optional Burmester 4D audio system, which absolutely kicks. It is one of the best audio systems of any vehicle at any price point, and I'm really glad that Mercedes is letting that awesome technology trickle down into its less expensive products. In terms of comfort, the GLC has a lot of interesting little touches that I think really add to the experience, and a few that detract from it just a little bit. For starters, there's a great padded center console right here, so if you need to brace your knee on something, or if you're kind of just cruising down the road and want to let your legs man spread just a little bit, the GLC can accommodate that very well. On the other hand, however, this bit of the door panel right here where your other knee would hit is hard as a rock and it kind of hurts when you're getting in and out of the car if you catch your knee on it just a little bit. I wish it was padded, that's kind of a bummer. Mercedes gives you just a little bit of padding on the B pillar right here, which is great for your elbows, but the backseat passengers are not so lucky. The C pillar is hard plastic and it doesn't quite dovetail into the rear seat armrest very well. Back on the positive side of the ledger is this stitched upper structure on the door panels and the dashboard. It looks very luxurious and very posh, and it's just a little bit of that extra detailing that this car needs to set itself apart. Speaking of detailing, I am thrilled to say that the enhanced ambient lighting from the EQS SUV that I drove recently has spilled over to the GLC. Now, it's an option, but you should absolutely tick that box. So if I could live in Malibu sunset colors, I absolutely would every single day of my life. The GLC also comes standard with a few extra comfort features like heated seats. My car is also optioned up with ventilated seats and the active posturing system where you just set what height you are and the car will adjust the seats and steering wheel for your frame. Also standard is automatic emergency braking and blind spot information. However, if you want more than that, you've got to check the $1,950 box for the active driving assistance package, which includes Distronic adaptive cruise control, lane change assistance, and lane centering, among other features. That price does seem a little bit high to me, considering you get the same set of features on a BMW X3 for about $600. All that aside, the Mercedes GLC does a very good job of keeping itself centered in the lane, and I really love using the lane change assistance technology. Pretty Pretty much all you do is you activate the turn signal when you want to move over and the car will look for an opening and when it's ready it will actually take over changing lanes for you. You still have to keep your hands on the wheel but the car does most of the hard work. Now thanks to that mild hybrid technology the GLC 300 rear wheel drive is rated at 25 miles per gallon city, 32 miles per gallon highway and 28 miles per gallon combined. That's better than any of its primary competitors the BMW X3 and the Audi Q5. The 2024 GLC 300 starts at 48,000 
$1,250 with destination included, and the flagship Pinnacle trim like the one I'm driving costs $52,600. All-wheel drive is a $2,000 option on every trim level, and as you'll remember, mine was not so equipped. However, with the driving assistance package, the AMG line exterior styling, a panoramic sunroof, and a few other extra option boxes ticked, my car has an as-tested price of $61,350. Now it's important to note that both the base and comparably equipped prices of the BMW X3 and Audi Q5 are about $3,000 less than the Mercedes-Benz GLC 300. However, the Mercedes is a little bit more fuel efficient, so you might be able to recoup some of that added cost in fuel savings alone. And there's no denying the appeal of the incredible technology suite in here, where this big, beautiful center screen earns major brownie points. The 2023 GLC 300 is an undeniable improvement over its predecessor, thanks to incremental advances in in-car technology, cabin comfort, and power and efficiency. But if you need more, then you could probably be fairly certain that there are AMG models on the way that should roughly line up with the C-Class. That means an entry-level GLC 43 and a top dog plug-in hybrid GLC 63. But even without those performance SUVs on the market right now, the 2023 GLC should continue to be MB's MVP. Thank you.